Hey everybody, it's Adrian from Suspect Sky. So during a press release today at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, NASA confirmed that after it took a new look at some old data from the, the Galileo probe flyby over Europa, uh, Europa is a, a moon around Jupiter, uh, and they've confirmed that they've actually detected water, uh, liquid water, in the form of a plume that was escaping the planet's gravitational field. And th this essentially confirms what many researchers have long suspected, is that there is a large liquid water ocean that exists under the icy surface of Europa. This is really exciting because while the Galileo probe uh, did not have the tools or the other equipment needed to be able to detect signs of life in this liquid water uh, that was released in this plume of uh, plume erupting from the surface of Europa, there, there's actually a new mission to Europa. This is called the Europa Clipper, which will have the instruments needed to determine uh, if life, even if just microbial life, if, if that exists in this ocean that's under this kind of ice shield, uh, this surface layer of ice on uh, the moon of, of Europa. And Europa is, a, is an excellent candidate for life in, in our solar system uh, for a number of reasons. Primary of which is, is that the Jovian moon itself uh, actually contains liquid water underneath this thick surface of ice. You know, we, we sometimes call this the ice shield. And this ice shield would be able to protect possible life forms from all the dangerous radioactive waves coming from outer space. Uh, we also know that Europa's subsurface ocean is exposed to some kind of heat source because we know now, uh, since the Galileo probe detected those plumes of water, uh, that this water is actually in a liquid form. What, what causes this heat, you know, we don't really know, it's kind of up for debate. But it is possible that Europa has some kind of geologic activity that's causing the heating, which is creating this sort of sub-ice surface level of an of a underwater, or a, an under-the-surface ocean. Or it could be some kind of tidal forces resulting from the moon's orbital path, uh, or it might be some other kind of internal process that we don't know about. But the Europa Clipper mission is specifically designed to fly into these plumes of water that's escaping from the moon. And it will include all the equipment necessary to uh, find signs of life if they're actually there. One exciting aspect of this mission is that the probe will actually conduct 44 low-altitude flybys of the Europa moon, uh, some of which will be as low as 25 kilometers. So to put this into perspective, the Galileo probe was several hundred kilometers away when it detected uh, the plume of water escaping from Europa. The Clipper mission will have 44 flybys. Uh, many of them will be 25 kilometers uh, in that range of 25 kilometers, which when you think about kind of, you know, what is say 12 miles away from you or 12 or 25 kilometers away from you, whatever system you use, uh, that is very, very close to the surface. Uh, so th this is pretty exciting and, and it's gonna be able to detect quite a bit of, uh, and, and gather quite a bit of scientific data as it flies through one of these plumes. The probe is also equipped, this new one, the Clipper probe mission, uh, is also equipped with a sounding radar, it's called. Uh, and this will be able to map beneath the ice that this subsurface, uh, or I'm sorry, this surface shell of ice with which there is this subsurface ocean underneath, and we'll be able to see what's going on beneath all that ice using this new radar technology. Uh, and the surface of Europa is estimated to be about negative 173 degrees Celsius which is almost negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's, it's pretty cold down there. But we do know now that there is liquid water under the surface being heated by something. And we also know that there are certain extreme organisms found in places like Antarctica that at least on Earth can live in about negative 100 degree Celsius temperatures and, and possibly even less, uh, even colder temperatures than that. So it's quite possible that we may find some forms of life or other kinds of life building materials or components on Europa during the Clipper probe's multiple flybys and fly-throughs of these plumes of water that are bursting through the European ice shield. And all this is really important to our understanding of the potential for life to form both inside and outside of our solar system because if life or even just the components of life uh, are able to form on two planetary bodies in, in one solar system, our solar system, uh, where there are vastly different environmental conditions uh, at both of those locations, and independently they were 
they were able to form, this would greatly impact uh, the likelihood that life, including intelligent life, formed elsewhere. And it, it would it would greatly impact our understanding of the Drake equation as well, which is this estimate of how many potential intelligent civilizations there might be out there that we may be able to communicate with or otherwise detect signs of. And if, if we're starting to find that life can independently rise in two very different, very extreme, opposite uh, kind of locations, planetary bodies in, in a single solar system, uh, then it's really going to up the likelihood uh, that as long as exoplanets form, and we continue to see that that is happening a lot, uh, that if planetary bodies are forming, then it's really likely that life, at least basic life, is going to be forming on those planetary bodies as well. Uh, and it's just going to really, really impact the chances that we may find extraterrestrial life out there. Just wanted to quickly thank the audience for listening uh, and to remind them that we are living in some interesting times right now. Uh, until next time, this is Suspect Sky signing off.